Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I know it's been a while, but today I'm going to be talking to you guys about something that I do quite often, and that's changing proportions of props to make a scene look really surreal and really interesting. So there are a couple of things you have to pay attention to while shooting your image that will make it much easier to edit it in Photoshop. So first of all, I'm going to be going through three of my tips on how to take the photos, and I'm going to show you what I do in Photoshop using this image that I created in 2013. But I feel that this is a great photo to illustrate what I'm going to explain. So let's get going. The first thing you want to pay attention to while taking the photos is take the photos of your props at the same location as a background. This will make your life so much easier, otherwise you'll be spending hours and hours trying to match the colours, the lighting to your background image and it will never look as polished as it will when you shoot at the location. So take that prop with you, shoot it right there and it will be so much easier when you're editing in Photoshop. The second thing you want to pay attention to is the angle. Shoot your background image, make a composition that you think will be very interesting and new and then go into your prop, photograph it at the exact same angle. You really want to go back and forth to imagine this is where I want the prop to be how am I going to take that photo? You want to match it up so you don't have to do any warping and transforming in Photoshop. The third thing you want to pay attention to while taking the photo is your aperture. When you take the photo of your background, let's say at around 2.8, which will give you a nice shallow depth of field, a nice blurry background, but still enough detail in the foreground. You want to change it while taking your prop. Because it's much closer to the lens, the depth of field will be much shorter. So compensate by making it a 5.6 aperture, which will give you a similar effect. You'll have enough space to work with. Uh, let's see it on this photo that I have right here. Right here on this background photo, you see that the sharp area is somewhere around here. Um, when we take the photo of the prop, you want to make sure that somewhere you have the same distance when you imagine it in your head. If it would be placed there, what would be in focus? So you imagine that and you focus on the thing that you want to have in, in focus. So I probably shot this at around 5.6 which gave me this uh, depth of field which matches really good. If you're going to be shooting it at 2.8 as well, you're going to get much blurrier edges which will not blend very well. Or if you shoot with a way closed aperture of like let's say 22, it will be too sharp and it won't blend in either way. So now that you've got those things done, Let's hop into Photoshop. We're in Photoshop and I have the original document open and I'm just going to strip it down to the background image only so we can build up the document together. Then I loaded in the telephone and I'm going to disable the layer mask so I can uh, show you what it looked like before. Um, I scaled it down so it would fit onto the path and then I used a layer mask to select it out of the background. This is what it looks like doing that. Then I just added a little layer to not make the reflection right there in the center of the telephone as bright as it was originally. And then I started doing some color work. So I uh, used hue and saturation to desaturate the entire uh, image. And then I played around with curves and levels, contrast and brightness. You want to be zooming in and out to see if it blends. If it doesn't blend, it's very noticeable when you zoom out. So you want to kind of match contrast, match sharpness, match brightness. Uh, that's the way you're going to get the most natural blend. Then I did uh, a curves layer, which uh, looks kind of like this. Having the blacks up will give you kind of a matte, vintage -y looking effect. Uh, to make it very cohesive, I, sh I use a sharp mask to kind of sharpen everything together, uh, which makes it very uh, uniform. And then I used a vignette to kind of draw your eye in. And that's really nice to finish off uh, an image like this, where the focal point is in the center. And that's it, basically. If you want to see anything else from me, comment down below. I'm going to try and be more active on this channel. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Bye!